from Group A17 are going to perform a presentation regarding the experiment of tray dryer. Our group consists of Yao Wing Tin, Clarence Yong, Tanapan, Choi Tang Kong, and me, myself, Amira. The demonstrator for this experiment is Ms. Taysir Muhammad, and the lecturers involved are Dr. Lokman Ismail and Dr. Taslima Khanam. Moving on to the overview of our presentation today. Our presentation consists of nine parts, which are abstract, introduction, theory, literature review, methodology, results, discussion, conclusion, and references. The abstract of this experiment. The objectives of the, this experiment are to investigate the influence of air temperature on the drying rate of a wet solid in air at a fixed velocity. And another objective is to investigate the influence of air velocity on the drying rate of wet solid in air of fixed temperature and humidity respectively. Therefore, this experiment is designed to be divided into two sub-experiments, which are experiment A and experiment B. In both experiments, the moisture content of the solid decreases with time and the drying rate is determined by the gradient of the moisture content versus time graph. It is observed that the drying rate increases with both a higher air temperature and higher air velocity. Now we'll move on with the introduction. Drying is the most common method in the separation process. It is a process applied to remove moisture from the substance that contains it. Technically, drying can be defined as the removal of the mass transfer consisting of the removal of water or any other solute by evaporation in a solid, semi-solid or liquid. Drying has been used to preserve food since many centuries ago because since drying involves the removal of water, absence of water in food will prevent microorganisms and bacteria from growing, hence preserving the food. Besides, drying is also used to remove water from the utility air that is used throughout an oil and gas plant. Because presence of water in those utility air will corrode and damage pipe and equipment. Drying is also used to dry up the purging gas that is used in an oil and gas plant. So moving on to the theory of this experiment. Basically, there are two parameters to be determined in this experiment, which are the effect of air temperature on the rate of drying and the effect of air velocity on the rate of drying. So for the first experiment, air temperature on the drying rate of wet solid is to be determined. Hence, the air temperature is manipulated while the air humidity is kept constant throughout the experiment. For the second part, the effect of air velocity is to be determined. Hence, vice versa, the effect of the air velocity is manipulated while the air temperature is controlled. As for the literature review, we have found that the same experiment has been conducted but papaya was used instead of sand. Hence, other factors such as geometry can be used in the experiment. The drying process was carried out using a tray dryer at different temperatures and air velocity. Prior to this, the weight of an empty tray was first measured so that the weight of samples could be determined. Firstly, the air flow needs to be set up first. The drying temperature was automatically applied in the process by the electrical heater placed in the inlet of the tray dryer. Thermocouple was used in order to determine the temperature. The drying process was started until it reaches steady state. The weight of the samples was taken with time interval range of 15 to 120 minutes until the weight became constant. From the obtained result, it has been approved that temperature was the most important factor affecting the drying rate for each geometry of size and tube. It was concluded 
it was also concluded from the experiment that the papaya slices suffered higher water loss compared to cubes because the larger surface area helps the temperature to take action strongly. The methodology of this experiment is divided into two, as the experiment is also divided into experiment A and experiment B. For experiment A, first, sufficient dry sand was filled into a tray at a depth of 10 mm. It is accurately weighed before being saturated with water inside the container. Excess free water is drained before being loaded evenly and smoothly into the drying trays and any spillage is avoided. The total weight of the wet sand is noted before drying commence. Second, the heater power control is set to off. Then, the fan is switched on till point one. Next, the heater power control is then set to point A. Moving on, at some arbitrary time, the dry bulb and wet bulb temperature, also the relative humidity of the air upstream of the sand tray are measured when the value of the heater power control is stable. Next, which is the sixth step, the total weight of the sand in the trays were recorded at regular time intervals until drying is complete. Then, the experiment is repeated again with setting the heater power control to point B. In each of these tests, it is important that the air velocity is kept constant and the same weight and distribution of sand is used. That is the methodology for experiment A. Now, moving on to the methodology of experiment B. Basically, it is the same as experiment A. First, again sufficient dry sand is filled into the tray at a depth of 10 mm and is each accurately weighed before being saturated with water inside the container. And excess free water is drained before the drying trays are put into the dryer. The total weight of the wet sand is noted as well before drying commence. Next, the heater power control is set to off and the fan is switched on till point 2. The heater power control is then set to point B and at some arbitrary time, the velocity is measured using digital anemometer when the value of the heater power control is stable. Lastly, the total weight of sand in the trays is recorded at regular time intervals until the drying is complete. So now I'll just explain what we can observe from the results. As mentioned just now, we have conducted the experiment twice, which is experiment A and experiment B. For experiment A, the experiment conducted is where we put the velocity of air constant, where we maintain the speed of air velocity, and then we alter the temperature of the heater. And this, the purpose of this is to test, is to test the effect of air temperature. So from the graph here, from the graph over here, we can see that as time increases from 0 to 30, to 30, the moisture content decreases as well. And this explains the negative graph of the graph over here, the negative gradient of the graph, which is negative 0 0.000108. And over here, we can see that the wet sand mass decreases with time. And this can be explained with the drying process. And we can observe over here 
which is the difference between the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature. As the difference of the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature increase, uh, the rate of drying increases as well. And this proof that the difference of the dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature increase, the rate of drying increases as well. Moving on to experiment B. Unlike experiment A, this time, the velocity of air is manipulated and the temperature, the temperature of the surrounding and the humidity are kept constant. Everything will be the same, even the procedures will be the same, but for example, the wet sand mass, which is in kg, decreases with time from 0 to 30 minutes. And the reason is the same, where it's because of the drying process. When? And where the, when the dry bulb temperature, the difference between the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature increase, the drying rate increases as well. And for this experiment, on the graph, we can see that the rate of drying is negative 0 0.000106 and this can be determined from the gradient. And now I'll explain about the, on how to calculate the moisture content for this experiment. So in order to calculate the moisture content, which is Xd, we have to come up with the formula weight of liquid divided by the weight of dry sand and both of this of this thing is in kg then weight of liquid can be defined as weight of wet sand minus by weight of dry sand and moving on after substituting the value inside we will come to the final answer and we will get the moisture content as we can see over here the drying rate the drying rate formula can be obtained from the graph, which is the straight line graph, which is a graph over here, the line graph. And then we'll substitute the moisture content into the x into the x equation. And then we will finally get our drying rate. And the drying rate unit is in kg over meter square minute. Discussion for this experiment has various factors and effects towards the end and also at the beginning of the experiment. Well, what is the main apparatus in this experiment? It's a tray dryer. What is use of a tray dryer? Well, tray dryer is used to remove the relatively small amount of liquid from the wet solid substance and to reduce the content of residual liquid to a desired level. In this experiment, there are two factors that affects the flow of the event, which are which will be discussed later on. Therefore, the experiment is divided into two parts, which is part A and part B. And by, uh, the part A and part B is divided into two again another two parts, which is the various changes in air velocity and also change in air temperature. The tray dryer used in this experiment is a Soltec tray dryer model BP772 and this tray dryer is designed in a way that it's a square box and it's a, it's a long square box and it's a narrow end here and a bigger end there. So why is this, uh, this design is for to allow more residence time. Okay, let me more elaborate more on the design. At the end of the other end, which is the bigger end of the tray, dis, uh, tray, ex, uh, tray design, which is big, it allows the placement of fan and also the heater. And other the narrow end is where the tray is, where the tray where you put the sand is. Well, this design is to provide more residence time for the air and temperature in the dryer for effective drying process. Residence time in this duration of air and temperature to be sustained in the dryer before it is released to the atmosphere. The first part of the experiment was to study the effect of air velocity. First, the dry sand was weighed and sprayed with water and also weighed after that and the final and also the initial part of it, the deduction is the moisture content. The fan is turned on and we waited for about 10 seconds so that the air movement is steady inside the tray experiment machine. 
The step was to allow the complete flow of air throughout the machine before heater heating up the air. After that, the temperature is kept constant at 26 degrees Celsius and the average air velocity is adjusted at 14.4 meters per second. The experiment is started and the readings for the inlet temperature, outlet temperature, relative humidity and wet sand weight is taken every 5 minutes interval and is recorded. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, from the graph one, in result, it shows a continuous decrease of moisture content from above, slightly above 0.006% at the y-axis, which is the moisture content, and up to, let's say, below 0.033% the moisture content at the time of 30 seconds. What do we get is a graph which is y equals to negative 0.001x plus 0.0061 with a mean residence time of 0 0.9836. As you can see, the blue line represents drying curve and the linear uh, diagram, I mean the linear equation is given by this equation. Well, moving on, here as the air velocity is higher, as you can observe as from the graph, as the air velocity is higher, the thin film of water is rapidly unbound from the surface causing no steady state present as the first air velocity. So what they're trying to mean is that the thin film of air, when there's air velocity moving on, will rap rapidly dry. Therefore, it can be concluded that the drying rate is higher when high air velocity is used. As the removal of water from the surface of wet sand is faster compared to the low velocity. So what we can conclude is that more air velocity, the faster it dries. On the other hand, the initial rate of drying is much higher in respect with time. This is the result of a low internal resistance of moisture at the beginning of drying. Therefore, when energy is impacted, moisture can easily move to the surface from the below and when it evaporated. As the drying progresses with time, more energy is required to break the molecular bond of the moisture and if constant energy were to be supplied. It takes longer time to break, therefore drying rate decreases. So ladies and gentlemen, what they're trying to mean is that at the starting of experiment, the rate of drying is really high because it's really easy to break the bonds. But when the, the film layer is becoming thinner, it's really hard to break the bond, therefore the drying rate decreases. Unfortunately, this cannot be seen in the experiment as we only, only date the drying for 30 minutes for each air velocity and not the concrete drying. The second part of the experiment is the study of the effect of temperature by changing the amount of heat supply. Heat supply is equal to the air temperature, which is directly perpendicular. When you increase the heat temperature, the, air, the heat supply, the air temperature increases. Theoretically, air temperature has a very significant effect on the drying rate. The higher the temperature of the air, the higher the dry rate. This is because high inlet temperature has more heat content and energy. It causes more moisture in a material to be removed easily on the surface as the water film formed on the surface of the material can be easily evaporate when the temperature is high. So what they're trying to say is that when there's low temperature, it's easier and it's harder to evaporate compared to high temperature which allows air evaporation to happen e easily. As another graph, for graph part B, as you can see, again there's a decline of uh, moisture content as the time progresses towards 30 seconds. As the x, uh, x axis represents time and y axis represents moisture content. This is given by the gradient and the R square is 0 0.9959. What we can see from the graph, it indicates that the wet sand contains free moisture which is to be evaporated by the surrounding air. The reason the moisture content decreases is due to the process of drying, as we know earlier, as we've been talking about in the theoretical and also the theory part of the experiment. Drying rate increases with increases in velocity of air and temperature in the surrounding. This is what we can conclude of the whole experiment. Unlike part 1 experiment, velocity of air is manipulated whereas the temperature of the surrounding and the humidity are kept constant. When in the first experiment, the air velocity changes while the temperature or the heat supply remains constant. 
Whereas in experiment B, the heat supply increases and decreases while the air velocity is kept constant. The rate of drying can be determined by the gradient of the graph. From the experiment, we can observe that the rate of drying increases as the difference between the wet bulb temperature and the dry bulb temperature increases, as what Clarence mentioned in the calculation part. From the experiment, I mean, this is because the difference between the, the wet bulb temperature and the dry bulb temperature acts as a driving force for the rate of drying. In a nutshell, drying rate is a strong function of velocity and temperature. Every experiment has its own error due to human error or also random error and also can be systematic error. But weakness of these three experiments that we observed are inaccurate weight reading. This is due to the plate hang from the weighing device and swinging causing the values to fluctuate significantly. And moving on, the second problem that we really faced when we were doing this experiment is inconsistent water and solid components. The sand weight and water percentage is not calculated. Hence, the component is not fixed and the values may vary. Lastly, the problems that we face is that the shortage of time. As you can know, we conducted this experiment and took the readings for 30 minutes, which is, which is really not enough. So the drying time is no long enough to get good graph of the drying process, which I said earlier, 30 minutes is not enough. And moving, adding on to the problems that we have, this is the weakness of the experiment is added on by the no power cons consumption reading for heater and fan. So we wouldn't know how much heat is supplied or the speed of the fan. Amount of water sprayed is inconsistent is also another weakness in the experiment. This makes it difficult to compare data since the initial weight of the water is not held constant. Well, when we have a weakness, we thought of a recommendation to improve this experiment further on. We, we would like to suggest that use more support for the weighing plate to make it more stable and also be more solid. And also use a fixed solid and the water content. So it's a solid and water content is a, is a fixed value. Other than that, increase the duration of the experiment. Let's say we did the experiment for half an hour, we can elongate it to be 60 minutes. Check all the equipment before use to know that the equipment are in proper order. Then a fresh batch of dry sand should be used for every single time of experiment. This is to, to avoid the same usage of the same sand over and over again which affects the result. Finally, install a device that provides the readings for the optimum, con optimum drying conditions which can be determined. In the conclusion of the experiment, trail dryer is one of the most effective drying process that have been used in the industry. In the industries, the way to conduct this trail dryer is by controlling the temperature which influences the heat and also the air velocity. Higher temperature will give more effect to the drying rate. This is proof that more temperature will provide more heat while air velocity is constant. The higher the velocity, the shorter the time to dry while the temperature is constant. In the other hand, the lower velocity will take longer time to dry out. In nutshell, the higher the velocity or the higher the temperature, the shorter the time to dry out the waters and eventually lead to the higher drying rate. Now, we come to the final part of the presentation, which is references. These are the few references as our main source to gain more knowledge and understanding of trail dryer, and this allows us to complete our experiment report successfully. Thank you for listening. That's all from us.